The biggest reason your website feels slow is because your images load like this. It's painful to look at and just makes your website feel incredibly sluggish even if everything else is blazing fast. That's why in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your images load like this. Instead, as you can see, we got that really nice blurry background. It's gonna be lazy loaded and everything is gonna be super performant. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today we're gonna to talk about lazy loading images as well as getting that blurry loading background that I showed you at the beginning. As you can see here, when I just refresh this page, it looks like everything is incredibly quick and responsive. And that's because my internet speed is incredibly quick and I'm downloading local images. But if I try to emulate what happens on a slower internet connection by coming over to my network tab, and I'll just do something like fast 3G, for example, and I'll just do a refresh on this page, you'll notice that the images load in incredibly slowly, as you can see. And when I scroll down to the bottom of the page, all I get is essentially a giant white box, which is obviously not ideal. Instead, I would like my images to have this nice little blurry background to them, which would look a lot better instead of slowly loading in one after the other. Now, if I go over to this other example, this is the final working example. As you can see, when my internet speed is fast, everything refreshes incredibly quickly and it looks quite good. And if I go over and I change my network speed to be a slower speed like fast 3G, when I refresh, you notice instead of getting a bunch of white boxes, instead I'm actually getting these like blurry backgrounds here for what the image could look like. And then as soon as the image is done downloading entirely, it's going to fade that image in over place of these different blurry backgrounds that you can see here. Now these images are very large. They're definitely not optimized. As you can see, these images are like a megabyte each, not at all optimized, but this is just kind of to show you what happens in the cases where you have these slower images. And as you can see, as they're starting to download, they're slowly fading in, which looks really great. Now the actual process of implementing this, I'm actually going to break down into two separate steps because there's two things that we need to tackle here. The first is going to be how do we lazy load images for performance reasons, and the second is going to be how to get that blurry background. But before I get started with any of that, I do want to mention that I have a full blog article on this. As you can see, it covers everything that I'm going to cover in this video in a written form. So if you want to check that out, I highly recommend checking it out. I'll link it down in the cards and description before you. It even has interactive examples. So going back here, we'll close out of the working example. We'll just look at this example. I'm gonna do a quick inspection on the page. I'm gonna to go to the network tab. And what I wanna do is I only wanna select images. As you can see here, I've selected just images and I have nothing at all showing up, no throttling, nothing like that. I'm just gonna refresh my page. And you'll notice if I look, I've downloaded 16 things. You see that 16 out of 18, that's saying I've downloaded 16 total images which is how many images there are on my page. But you'll notice I'm only able to see like four, maybe six images at a time on my page. I can't see all 16. So my page is downloading even the images all the way down here at the bottom, even though I can't actually see those images yet. So this is clearly not something that I wanna do. So I wanna talk about implementing lazy loading, which will only load the images that you can see. And then as you scroll down the page, it'll start to load more and more images. So let's just go back to the very top here. What I'm gonna do is over in my source for my HTML, as you can see, we have a really simple, just grid layout, pretty straightforward with some image tags. I wanna go onto each one of my image tags and all I wanna do here is just type in loading and set that equal to lazy. By default, it's set to eager, which means it loads right away. If I just change this to lazy, it's just saying load this only when it's able to be viewed or about to be viewed. And if I just copy that down, and I paste that for every single one of my different images. So I can just come in here real quick. I'll just get a bunch of cursors onto each of those, paste that down, give it a quick save. Now my images are lazy loaded. If I do that same inspect trick, go over to the network tab, I wanna clear everything out so there's nothing at all showing up. And I'm just gonna refresh my page. And if I go full screen, you'll notice now we've only downloaded 10 of those 16 images. So what's happened is it downloaded the four images at the front and it downloaded the next six images that are going to be seen on the screen. And if I open that network tab back up real quick, you'll notice that as I scroll, it'll actually download more and more images. So we're at 10 images right now. And as I scroll, that number increases. And now you can see I've scrolled to the bottom, all 16 of my different images are being downloaded. So it's only downloading those images as soon as I get to the point of actually being able to view them, which is really great. And it saves you a lot, especially if you have a lot of images on your page. Now, just doing this though, isn't going to fix the problem of that white background showing up and the images loading slowly. If I go back here to throttling on fast three, G and I refresh my page, even though it's downloading less images because it only has to download the images at the top, you can still see I get that problem where I kind of get these white sections on my page. It just doesn't look very good overall in my opinion. And you can see I just have this giant blank section with no indication of what this is even supposed to be. 
And this is the ideal scenario where you want to do lazy loading for your images in a little bit more advanced of a way, because all this does is just delay loading images until they are viewable on the screen. What I want to do is I want to show a placeholder image that's super blurry and then load the image in the background and show it over top. That way we don't get a scenario where our image is slowly loading from top to bottom. Like if I do a quick refresh again, you'll see this very first image. It just shows up top to bottom. If we just scroll to the very top here, wait a second for it to actually show. You can see everything is just going top to bottom really slow. Obviously that's not ideal and does not look very good. So the easiest way for us to fix this problem, we'll just get rid of throttling for now, is we need to wrap each one of our images inside of a div. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna wrap this very first one in a div just to show you what it looks like on this first one. I'm gonna add a class here called blur load. You can call this class anything you want. This is just going to be the class that determines that you want to have that blurry image and it's wrapping your actual normal image. Then the really important thing here is I'm going to set a style and this style is going to be a background image and this background image I want to be a very, very, very small version of our image. So in our case, I actually have some images in my image folder. You can see I have a small version and a normal version and I'll just show you exactly how I generated that version in a second. But this small version here is incredibly small. For example, if I just come in here and I change this URL to something that doesn't exist, and you can see that I have a bunch of these images being gridded across the page. That's how small my image is. It's only 20 pixels wide. That's how super, super small it is. But if I change my styles a little bit by selecting that blur load class, and I just come in here and I change that I want the background size here to be cover, that just means it's going to expand to fill the full space instead of repeating like this. You'll notice I automatically get a blurry image, which already looks great. And the thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that my background position is also going to be in the center. So I can say center like that. And I want that to match my image up here. So I'll just come in here. And this, instead of saying background, is going to say object. There we go. And I can also change this to be object fit to cover. And the real key here is whenever you're doing this blurry loading, you want your background size and position to match your object fit and position as well. That way they perfectly line up over top of each other and when it fades in, it's gonna look really smooth. So already just by doing that, you can see I get this really cool blurry version of my image. And if I were to have an actual image URL that was correct, you can see that the images kind of line up to each other fairly well. It's obviously not perfect because a 20 pixel image is super small, but if I do that for all my different images, it actually looks relatively close to what the image is without being a large resource for you to download. Because if I go ahead and I look at the actual image here, this small image is 267 bytes. That's incredibly small compared to the normal image, which is massive at 530 kilobytes. Obviously it's not optimized, but you can see the difference in size just by looking at it. And when I zoom in, you can see it's just a super pixelated version of the image. You can even see the individual pixels because it's only 20 pixels wide. Now, the way that I generated those images is fairly straightforward. Essentially, I used FFmpeg. And if I scroll down here a little ways in this article, you'll actually see that I have the exact command written out here. So if you go to the article, I'll link in the description. You can copy the command if you want. But essentially, you just specify the input that you want, pass it in the name of the image. You pass in this flag of dash VF, and that's just saying you want to modify the actual image itself. And we're changing the scale to be 20 pixels wide, and negative one means keep the same aspect ratio. And then this is the name of the output file that we want to create. Fairly straightforward, so if you want to use FFmpeg, you can. There's tons of other ways to downsize an image, though. You can do it online. There's online tools. You can open up something like Figma or Photoshop and just manually resize the image. FFmpeg is just a programmatical way to do it, and it's fairly easy. And you could automate this process if, for example, you had a bunch of images on your site. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead. I'm going to copy this div down. I'm going to wrap every single image in its own div, and I'm going to give them all their own background image based on the actual image that's showing up. So just give me one second to do that. There we go, I just changed all of these and every single one has their own small image that's showing up in place of the large image. Now you may think that this is enough to already get most of what we want, but it's not quite that easy. If I go back and I throttle my network speed again to see what this looks like, you'll notice that the blurry images show up right away, which is great, but as the normal images load in, you see they load from top to bottom, which obviously doesn't look super good. It's obviously not what we want. So instead we need to hide the image until it's entirely fully downloaded and then we can show the image. And to do that, we're gonna write a little bit of JavaScript. I'm just gonna put that at the very end of my body just so that we can get every single thing inside of one HTML page here, just so it's easier for you to follow. Now what I wanna do is I wanna select all of the different blur divs that we have. So I can just say document.querySelector. I wanna get all of them with that class of blur div. So whatever class you give the element, just make sure you select based on that class. That's what I'm doing right here. Then I just want to loop through them so we can say blur divs dot for each. And essentially I want to set up an event listener on my image for when it is loaded. That way I can make sure I show it properly. So we're going to loop through each one of these divs just like this. And I want to get the image. 
An image here is just query selecting the image inside of here. So I can do query selector for image inside of that div, just like that. Now we have access to my image. So I'm gonna create a function called loaded. And this is going to be called when my image finishes loading. And we'll do whatever we want inside of here. For example, show image. There we go. And then I'm just gonna have a really simple if check here. I wanna check for the complete variable. If this is true, it means the image is already downloaded. So if the image is downloaded, it's like super fast to download and it downloads before the script tag runs. Well, I just wanna call this loaded function right here. That means the image is already done loading. We don't have to do anything else. Otherwise, I wanna add an event listener to my image. So we're gonna add an event listener here on load and I'm gonna call the loaded function. And this just means as soon as my image is done loading, it's going to call this function. So it's going to call the function either right away if the image already loaded, otherwise it's going to call the function as soon as the image loads. So once my image is done downloading, we're calling a function that allows us to show the image. Now to handle the showing and hiding of the image, I'm gonna be using a class for that. So we're just gonna come in here, I'm gonna say div.classlist.add, I'm gonna add the loaded class to it. And then I'm gonna use that in my CSS to actually determine how I hide or show different things. So if we come all the way up here, we'll just minimize that into our CSS, we can have some code like this. So we can say blur load dot loaded, and then any styles in here are going to apply as soon as our image is downloaded. So what we can do is we can take all of the images inside of our blur load just by doing this. And what I wanna do is I wanna hide them by default. So we'll just say display none. But instead of doing that, since I wanna do like a fade animation, instead I'm gonna set the opacity to zero. And what that's going to do is allow me to fade my image in once it's loaded. So I can take this selector right here and I can say that my image is going to come in with an opacity of one when it is loaded. And then we can just do a simple transition. We'll say like 200 milliseconds ease in and out. And we wanna do this on the opacity property. And what that's going to do is it's going to be a 200 millisecond fade in as soon as my image is done loading, which is going to look really good. Now it looks like something's not working because obviously we're not getting our loaded images shown up. So I'm guessing some of our JavaScript is wrong. And if I look here, it looks like I forgot to include the else here. There we go. So now if I add that in, give my page a refresh, it's still not working. And that's because again, this should probably say blur load instead of blur, blur div. And now if I save, you'll notice everything's working and it gave me that fade animation. But the key here is if I throttle my network speed down here to a fast 3G and I refresh, you'll notice it doesn't give me that top down version of the loading of the images. It's gonna wait until the entire image is downloaded, which in our case is pretty slow because these images are quite large. But as soon as the image is fully downloaded, then it's going to fade that image in. As you can see, these background images for the blurry stuff, they actually look rather good for how small they are, only being 20 pixels wide. They relatively look kind of like what we want them to, which is great. And you can play around with that size by making them bigger or smaller if you want more or less detail. But it's a really easy way to get this automatic blur. And as you can see, we're getting everything to fade in, which looks really, really good. Let's disable that throttling because there's a few extra things that I want to do to this loading animation to make it look a little bit better. For now, I'm just gonna comment out the code that adds that loaded class, and it's just gonna give us the blurry version by default here. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna make it obvious to the user that the image is currently downloading. And generally, the way that we like to do this is like with a skeleton animation where we kinda have like a pulsing animation where things are getting brighter and darker and brighter and darker. And there's a really easy way for us to do that inside of here. Again, you can do whatever animation you want, but I think this one looks pretty good. So what we can do is we can select our blur load here. So we'll just say blur load and I want to actually get the before element and I'm just going to place essentially a white rectangle over top of everything so we can say our content here is going to be blank we can position this absolutely so we'll say position absolute our inset is going to be zero that just means it's going to touch the top left right and bottom all of those are going to be zero and our blur load here we're going to set as a position relative that way we're absolutely positioned inside of it Finally, I'm just going to set a background color. For now, I'm just gonna set it to white. And if we save, you'll notice we get a bunch of white rectangles, which is great. But instead, I want this to instead be an RGBA value because I want it to be partially transparent. So we're gonna do white and let's just make it like 10% opacity. So now you can see we kind of have this like slight white rectangle over top of everything. And what I wanna do is I just wanna increase and decrease the opacity of this to kind of give it a pulsing animation. So let's give it an animation. We'll call it pulse. And then let's just say that we want it to last 2.5 seconds. We don't want it to be super fast and we'll make it an infinite animation. So now I can come down here with my keyframes. This is for pulse. And at 0%, I just want my background color to be a specific background color. In my case, I'm going to set it to zero here. Then what I'm gonna do at 50%, oops, 50% is I'm gonna set my background here to 0.1. I'm gonna do the exact same thing at 100%, but I'm gonna change it back down to zero again, just like this. 
So now if we give that a save, you can see that it's pulsing in and out. It's kind of giving us that animated look where it's just giving that little bit of a pulse. It's rather small and not super in your face, but I think it looks really good and it kind of gives the appearance that things are downloading. And again, you can change this around by maybe making it more white so it kind of has a more intense animation. You could speed it up, slow it down, whatever you want. And we can also remove this background color here because it's taken care of in our animation for us. And that looks really, really good. I really like that. And what we can do is just make sure that when we load this, we remove that animation. Because right now, if we just comment this in and we see that everything's loaded, we're still going to have that animation showing up, which is definitely not ideal. You can kind of still see it a little bit. So instead, what we want to do is we want to select when our blur, blur load is loaded. We want to get the before element and we're just going to remove the content from it. That's going to essentially completely remove the element. You could also come in here and you could remove the animation itself if you want by saying animation none, whatever works for you, but setting the content to none is good enough. That's going to remove everything for us. Now, if you want to take your image optimization to the next level, you're going to want to use responsive images, which I talk all about in this video right over here. Also, if you want to check out written versions of this article or that video linked over there, they're going to be down in the description below for you. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.